Are you serious? Say all night long. Been a while, you feel easy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a special guest here for you. This is Farron Easy. Nice to be here. Farron Height, Farron Easy. Any which one, they're both good. <laughs> Thank you for having me. And I'm so happy right now because I'm actually listening to one of his songs just come out. Well, it come out yet? All which night one? long. Which one? All night just long. Just got released yesterday. Oh, yeah. wow. Just got really See, I'm a special, but can we get that before everybody? You know? <laughs> Thanks time. to DJ Wade. <laughs> yeah, a bit long time. <laughs> and nice. um, yeah, so I want to just quickly start out with first of all, um, how did you get your start in the industry? Music industry starts. Okay, um, I was always the kid from high school that was into break dancing. Um, you know, the talent shows at school and at other schools used to. Back in those days, it was about the, the, the break dancing Which era. school? I went to Woolmans. I get quite a geese. <laughs> I get quite a geese. Yeah, man, I get quite a geese for sure. <laughs> so while at Woolmans, I got myself um, immersed in that, that scene, you know, that urban yeah. scene. Yeah. And um, so I've always known that uh, entertainment, generally speaking, was a part of what I wanted to do. Yeah. So. Uh, when it was time to leave high school, I opted to go to uh, an art college, which was Edna Man. It's the only one in the Caribbean. Oh, visual arts. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. funnily enough, when I went to Edna, I, I went to get a graphics degree. That's what I went for. Okay. So, I have a graphics degree from there, but I got into music seriously while at Edna. Mm. But if you know Edna, the, they have four schools on one campus. Yes. The music, dance, drama. And arts. And visual arts, yeah. Yeah, so I was enrolled in the arts, mm. doing graphics, but the music school is right next door, so. So you're just wondering. Yeah, man. <laughs> the sounds, the sounds always kept coming always. from next door. Yeah. yeah. And I got invited to join a band when I was in my second year, so that's really oh, wow. where it started. What a band! It's really, it was called Morse Code. Morse Code. Yeah, man. Big up to Nigel Staff, Chris Bentley, um, Pregs, you know Ray, those original guys who oh, really wow. kind of brought me into Peter Tolo. For, For sure, Peter, tell a big up yourself. Was Peter but, an Ashe? No, Peter was a bass player and he migrated to New York many years ago, oh, about okay. 20 years ago. But I, those guys. Yeah, I was in Ashe and okay. that name sounds very familiar to you me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. He was not a dancer for sure. He might have been no, one no, of the musicians. I was a dancer. Oh, no, Ashe has musicians? I was in drama, yep, yeah, drama and he singing. Possibly could have been. He mm. could have been because he's very, you know, he's ambidextrous like that. So yeah. possibly. Yeah. You know, I, right. I met a lot of Ashe, Ashe performers I'm coming sure up along the way. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. Yeah, man. Yeah. Grace Institution, Ashe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so from there, yeah. so we, we, you know, we have to talk about... The transitioning? Uh, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> from art school, I got involved in music there. Um, I was about 18, 19 then, left mm -hmm. Jamaica, went to live in London for about two years. Um, didn't do any musical gigs in London, but I, I, I kind of got a chance to sink myself in just music, because mm -hmm. I kind of listen wide, you know, my ears is just not calibrated to Jamaican or Caribbean no. music alone. Eclectic. So, yeah, man, I was very into a lot of things, you know. Mm. London is a home of, of, of bigging up things like reggae and ska, but at the same time, you know, you have rock and punk and yeah. a lot of things that influence us along the way. So yeah. I don't think punk music influenced my sound, but I like I like what they stood for. Yeah. I like some of the dressing aspects with the Doc Martens and the leather and the jeans. Yeah. So, you know, being in London, in 1992, yeah. it was you know days of soul to soul, and oh. I went to a concert and saw Maxi Priest, and yeah. I'm looking at these and guys, music. yeah man, yes. yeah yes. Omar, yeah. these guys, and you know, oh. I was like, wow, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to do this more, I'd like to take yeah. this further. Yeah. So London was a good stamping ground. Yeah. Um, when I got back to Jamaica, I actually came back to finish my graphics degree, and at that point, um, went back into that same band. Morse code, which was at the time splitting up because I remember Nigel Staff, who is a very prolific keyboard player in the, in the reggae music business. Mm -hmm. Nigel got a call from Dr. Paul, who was playing bass for Maxi Priest. Mm -hmm. This was the time Shabarangs were just blowing up. So he got a call to go and play for Shabarangs on tour, which mm -hmm. meant 
all band was splitting up. You know, oh, so we were there. like, been there, done oh. that. I know. It was bittersweet because we we're glad for my, my friend to yes, be going on tour. Can't. Yeah. But the band had split up for a while. But very soon after, I joined another one called Offbeat. This mm -hmm. was with Andrew McIntyre, mm -hmm. Rupert Bent and Andrew Simpson. This was an acoustic trio where I was the lead okay. vocalist. Okay. Very interesting stuff. So I really got to hone my craft, yeah. you yeah. know, for a couple of years. We performed many places around Kingston, mm -hmm. in the Negril, Ocho Rios and so on. Yeah. So started to get used to, you know, performing in front of people. Yeah. You build your confidence and yes. your, your pitch and your tone and yeah. all these things, you know? Yeah, and you work right. with different things and you try different things rather than exactly. standing at the same place on the microphone. Because yeah, in that. Jamaica, for you, for y'all who don't know, if you're not dynamic and if you don't move on yeah, stage... Man. They will boo you, man. They will say you're boring. Boo you? <laughs> what kind of buckle and Buckle will reach you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, so we got that chance to do all that, you know? Yeah. Big up the guys, like I said, McIntyre, Andrews, Andrew Simpson, Nigel Staff, Rupert Bent. These are the people, you know, around me at the time. Mm. We did some recordings. Nothing very serious where recording was concerned. Mm. Until later on, um, I... What was happening? My very first set of recordings I did on my own. Because mm. I find, you know, what I found out in that time in Jamaica, people might think that, you know, you're uptown, so mm. you're automatically going to have an advantage and everything. Uh, but I think it's the opposite it's way the opposite. in it Jamaica. The opposite, yeah. you know, that's why you have to big up Sean Paul yeah. on how far he has gotten, really, because yeah. he had to fight yeah. to get himself heard. Yep. Or even taken seriously. Hello, boy. Like, yeah, man. What? I've been to a short stone before. You play water polo. Yeah, man. What you, what you doing? At, what you doing on an arrow studio? What I do down here? I'm moving from in front of the gate, man. <laughs> Yeah man, Spraga Benz and my friend them have to come save we and said, no man, we're friend them, let them in. Oh really? Yeah man, I've seen... So this is a true story? Of course, I've seen oh, Sean Paul yeah. book to perform at like a Stone Love yeah. anniversary party yeah. when people would know his songs that were just being played but don't yeah. know him. Yeah. I run him from the gate, I have to oh, jump geez. the fence around the back to go perform, you know, oh, on the party boy, <laughs> what that he's booked for. Oh, yeah man, so you have, to, you have to roll with that, you know. You, you and know. I remember when his... Um, when not deport them when um baby infiltrate, girl infiltrate when around that say, time oh who that a super cat and when yeah. the sound is not super cat yeah they must have wait and say, i'm a thief the, i'm a thief the sound <laughs> you have to be influenced by someone you and sean was very very someone. influenced by super cat yeah. you know And then he developed his own style. Absolutely. So about that, I know that you um, do stuff with him as well. Yeah, man. You were at the One Love. Oh man, he was awesome. The festival is a good show. Because, Big yeah. up to all people in New Zealand and out on the Gold Coast. Thank you yes. so much. Yeah, you're for welcome. The one, yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. But um, you were doing your thing and so on, and yeah, you, you, you look really comfortable on that kind of stage, and people were kind of, you know, kind of jumping for you. And someone <laughs> would come on, they're like, Yeah, who's that guy? Nice. Who's that guy? It's nice. <laughs> So, yeah. I've been touring with Sean for I've been touring Sean for a while, yeah. better part of 16 years. Oh, and is it that long? Yeah, man, oh, 16, geez. 17 years. Ever since he, he blew up in 2003, yeah. 2004, yeah. and I'm there to decorate Sean's music and make it more beautiful you, in, you, in search for a better word, you know? But you are I, a fantastic performer on your own. Thank you. I try to do my thing I, on my own too. I deliberately listened to the stuff you were doing on stage. Oh, okay. And I like that Sean kind of back off and make you do your thing because yeah, I think he's realizing that you, you have that ability. I'm sure he Absolutely. knows. Absolutely. I'm sure he knows. Yeah. Absolutely. He's a, he's, a, he's a meticulous performer, so he yeah. likes his thing set a certain way. Yeah. And like I said, I'm there to support it, you know, yeah. and push it forward because he really is he really is flying the flag yeah. for yeah, Jamaica man. very high. Yeah, man. Trust me. Yeah. You know? So, no so, offense, uh, Sean, but we're I going back to <laughs> Okay, so the transition because, came yes, out. Yeah. Um, after Morse code, there was offbeat, and then I started to do my own recording. Um, I, re I released my first, angle, my first album sorry, mm. um, on my own in 
1999. Yeah. It's called Fringe to Four. Mm -hmm. You know, I was Fringe to Four. Fringe to Four, which is really bringing what's on the edge to the foreground. Because uh, my music was for -E. for -E. Yes, All Fringe right. to Four. All right. right, that was the name of the record. You can look it up still. We have to search that. Yeah, now. man, big up so Steve. Is it available on? It is social? online. Yeah. It is online somewhere. CD mm -hmm. Baby used to sell it because back in those days, 1999, CD. you're printing CDs. CDs. You know, CD. yeah. we, we we sold quite a bit of those. You know, I think we sold like three thousand of those. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, it wasn't even really a tape at the time. It was a, it was a CD it was a that CD. one? All right, we're just coming out. Go. We're just coming out of the cassette era. <laughs> big up to Steve Wilson. It was my manager, my oh, partner okay. at the time. Oh, okay. Um, and I got, I got, I got, you know, recognized quite well because. Yeah. In, in um, I believe it was a July issue of Billboard magazine, mm. put my face on the cover, yeah. wow. which brought a lot of attention to me right before wow. the album came out. Yeah. Because a writer for Billboard had listened to some of my, my records, I did a cover of an Isley Brothers track, which is probably one of my most people know me most for. Yeah. A track called Atlantis. Atlantis. And um, right. yeah. And um, the, the, the lady that was writing for Billboard heard it and said, "Wow, it doesn't sound like your typical sound coming yeah, out of Jamaica." Jamaica so she yeah. gave it a, a great write-up, and yeah. they chose it for the front cover, cover story. Yeah. So that got me some attention. I was acting at the time in theatre. Yeah. Um, I was doing Jamaica had a, a sitcom called Royal Palm. I don't know if you remember Royal, Royal Palm. Royal Palm Estate, of course, yeah, yeah. Royal Palm. Are you <laughs> yeah, kidding? Man. Yeah, I was a star in Royal Palm that for a while. Miss me. Yeah, man. I was a little young, troublesome dreadlock star that was, was messing you. with all the girls. I, re mm. I remember. I remember this. Yes, of course. I'm yes. fangirling right now because I remember. It's it's um, it's it's big up to Lenny Little White Lenny for Royal Little Palm. White. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was Every good. Sunday. Yeah, it Every was a good. Every Sunday night. It was a good run. Oh my goodness. So part. So that was part of the transition, you know. Um, <laughs> After the album came out, I got I got chosen from the Jamaica contingent to go represent Jamaica at Midem. Um, you know, Midem is a comeback, yeah, along with quite a few others. I remember Ernie Smith, Gordon Scott, um, Ivan A, I remember these names, Lost, yeah. which had Tony Curtis oh, and Luke Kiddy and them. Yes, Tony, yes, yes, yeah, man. yes, yes. Uh, Tanya Stevens, I believe, was there as well. Yeah. Wow. So that was a great, great experience for me. Mm. Um, got a couple of shows on my own, South Africa and France, um, leading off of that. Yeah. So that was really, you know, in two, 1999 yeah. when I was taking my, my, the money that I was working, because I was working for going to school and working part time for DHL. Yeah. I was their onboard courier, yeah. flying to Miami every four days for the week. So I was yeah. taking my money and doing my recording, you know. Yeah. Big up to all the engineers down at Gussie Clark Studio, you know, um, that I did most of this album at. And That's awesome. It came out and, you know, it, it really, it really kind of signaled me being in the business in a serious way. Yeah. You know, after that, a lot of, a, a couple of producers took me more seriously, you know. Yeah. I went out to King Jammies, you know, yeah. Mikey Bennett Studio at Grafton Records, you yeah. know, big up to Bulby and the rest of them. Yeah. Right, so that was a scene back then. Yeah. Then, um, so, you know, I've been putting out my music since then, in 2003, you know, um, it's the advent of Sean Paul. Sean Paul blew up in 2003, going 2004 with Give Me the Light and Pass the Job. But we know him you know? from, I know him from um, stage. From stage one. Stage one. Yeah, man. We were yes. all there at stage one. Yeah. But he really got the international acclaim After from Dutty Rock. Dutty Rock. Yeah, yeah. so when and he, he got was, the Grammy for it too. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes, yeah, man. yes, yes, yes. Big yes. up to Sean Paul. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So when he was putting his side, his band and so together for the, touring the world from yeah. Dutty Rock, you know. His management called me and said, yo, fair night, you know, you have your thing going on, you, you, you know, yeah. you're popping around, you want to join us? I was like, ready. Oh, that's and awesome. I've been with the, with, the, with the crew ever since, you yes. know, yeah. and I've been, um, I've been allowed to develop my own music and my own sound at the yeah. same time being a part of that. Yeah. Dutty rock movement. And that's so important because a lot of people who, when they get to that level yeah. and they have people with them, they kind of want to say, well, no, you can't really, you have to kind of, with me, you're yeah, with yeah. me or you're against me. And you, exactly. But, but he seems to want to. No, 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 no. Lenient. Yeah. I can, I can, he's very supportive yeah. of the things that I do. Yeah. Um, within recent years, I would say within the last two years, um, I've been really back on a horse to record more. Yes. Um, I've been doing a lot of things over the last 10 years. I've had many events um, in, 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 in Kingston and around in Jamaica, mm. promoted many parties. I mean, you have, um, we had a stint at the Fiction nightclub called BNM, which went very well for us for five years. And then wow. there was SPF, which is like a 
a summer party series that they have yeah. in Ocheria, so I was a part of that yeah. for a couple of years while working with Sean Paul at the same time. Yeah. So if there was a there was a, a couple of years where I wasn't really writing or recording a lot. Um, my focus had, had, had shifted to doing other other things, and yes. yeah. I'm glad because I've. I have a bar now which I opened, which sprung off of me doing these things. Big yeah. up to all the people who love Stone's Throw. Coming right back at you. Yeah, man. Right. Stone Throw Bar in Jamaica. That's another one of my endeavors. Where is Stone Throw? Stone Throw is located right, what do you call that now? Mary Brown's Corner. Mary Brown's Corner. Matilda's, okay. Matil, it's not Matilda's, Manningsill Road and Conspring Spring Road. Yeah. Right where you have the Richie B gas station. Yeah. If you know it, right across oh, there. Oh, gosh. That station is still there? Yes, it is. It's no longer Richie B's. It used to be Ali McNabb Station Ali back McNabb in the day. Station. Then Richie B. <laughs> and I believe it now is Mr. Azan's. But everybody kind of know it as the Richie B gas station. Oh. Because I went to Immaculate before I went to Wilma's. You said right. drive past it every Yeah, you have to drive past it. Yeah, you yes, have to. I remember, I remember. The yeah. road them set up nice and pretty now, but it's oh, still there. Geez, so yeah. we've had a we've had a great, you know, run at Stone Straw and it's a very musical place too, you know. Yeah. So I think my going to Edna, like I said to you before, it kind of sets the tone for me doing many things uh, creative. I'm a creative guy. Yeah. I still well, design my own flyers I still design yeah. logos for people I still yeah. very much script a lot of videos for myself and others yeah even up to now I'm scripting something for Sean's new video coming up That's so awesome. I mean I have I have that that, that background that I love to yeah. I love to dabble in creative stuff but yeah. like I said for the last two years I've been recording a lot more mm. um, with a view to an album on, um, late in 2020 now yeah um, but yeah so, so Let's get into at. that. Okay. Because so now we're gonna bring in just talk about um Wade, DJ Wade okay. and the connection there and how that started and how you're getting into um your album. Well, I've been learning um, even more recently of the many fabulous things that DJ Wade is doing. Um right, huh? here. Yeah, absolutely. Imari. You know, he's a very quiet guy, but you know, Imari. quiet waters run deep. We call him Lelo. Yeah, but well. Because I'm just, yeah, easy it's like a that. Silent river. Easy, yeah. silent water run deep. But I've known Wade from years back, from before he came to live in Australia. Um, He's a Jamaican and he used to be a, a producer yeah. slash engineer down there doing great things. Yeah. Um, I remember him being affiliated to this artist that blew up, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> I could have been one of the most notorious. Go on sing. Turbulence, no, turbulence. Man, just go on Tur big up turbulence. <laughs> right, just go yeah, man. <laughs> you know, Wade, I think they came from the same area and stuff. So, yeah. you know, I kind of, I was friendly with Wade. You know, I was like, unusually, he's such a nice guy. You know, most yeah. industry people are they're very egotistic oh, for the most part. Oh, I know. And, and they're hard to deal with. Oh, I know. I know. But I know. Wade is a, is a pleasant, pleasant change. And, yeah. you know, me and him developed a good friendship from Jamaica yeah. and kept in touch. He came over here in Australia and he's a brilliant um, app and tech developer. Oh yeah. So he is he has a different kind of brain yeah. space than we do. Yes. We're artistic, he's dealing with O's and ones and scientific he's technical like yeah he's that thing. Like, I know different I know, language. I know. Yeah. But as a bridging yeah. he's still very much there for me and every time that we travel over here to Australia yeah. he's always there, very supportive, comes yeah. to the shows, anything that we need on the side, he's very much always there, you know? So speaking of which big up big up DJ, DJ Wade, Wade because it's him get me the backstage pass ah, to meet you guys. See there? See there? There we I, go. I didn't even yeah. know. I didn't him just him just um send a message to another friend of mine, Celia, and say, um, yeah, you wanna come to the show? I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because the tickets were sold out. Right. And then him say, Yeah man, all right, you, you you girls want backstage passes? I'm well, like, um Got you, yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean if you have any yeah. <laughs> But uh, everything happens for a reason, yeah, man. and uh, I, I appreciate you sharing with me because you don't know me from a bag of potatoes, but I appreciate it. We have the radio show on 40B, and I'm okay. definitely going to be playing your song that we're going to be talking about now. Okay. We're going to be talking about All Night Long. Yeah, man. And we're also going to be talking about a song that you just told me about that you say is playing in Europe now, because I have to yes. get that as well. Yeah, I'll surely yeah. send it to you. Yeah. Um, in Europe, I just recorded a cover song. It's a cover track from an artist by the name of Dita Bolan. The track is called You're My Heart, You're My Soul. Mm -hmm. 
and it's right now climbing the charts over in Europe. So if any of you people over in Europe seeing it rise on the charts, you can just vote for it. Big up to Rico Bernasconi and Oli, the producers of the record, and of course Hooky Records, the distributors. So um, um, I'm friends with Rico for a couple of years now. He's done a couple. He's a guy who does remix um, house and techno yeah. style remixes, right? So he heard some of my music. Um, and got his hands on a couple of acapellas and he just does the house version like I would I could have a reggae song or something that's on kind of reggaeton Latin flavor yeah. and he would just do a hardcore yeah, yeah he's very much that four to the floor guy he's that guy that, nice, he's that nice, guy nice. so um, his idea it was his idea to do this track yeah. uh, you're my heart you're my soul because it was a big hit in Europe in the 80s oh, so um, he actually sought you out well um, I was working with him yeah. for about a year or two and yeah. he just I believe he just came across the record, you know, and said, you know, this throwback would sound good with Fahrenheit's voice oh, okay. because I kind of sing with a. You may falsetto. wonder if I'm Jamaican. Yeah, you, I have you, falsetto you in my range. have a falsetto and it's very bluesy. It's a kind yeah, of. A, okay. Yeah. It's, I hear the Jamaican in it when you get into the. But when you did the. Have a different kind of vibe to it. <laughs> it's sound like a Trent Darby right there. So. It sounds pretty, man. It's a falsetto. Nice. It's up there, so. Thank you. And a lot of we'll listen enough Prince and today. Terrence Trent Darby when we are grown. Oh, yeah, 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 kill you with falsetto. Yeah. Prince? Prince. I just want your extra time in your. <laughs> 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 we love it. You we love are it. All right. We love it. We love it. <laughs> all right. So, am I. Yes. Uh, here, make me sing Am I your favorite girl? <laughs> Whoops. All night long. Amaya. I know. So all night long. Um, yes, that's just released yesterday. Um, that record, how'd that come about? Sean Paul just opened the studios in Jamaica about maybe six, eight months ago. Um, he has a recording studio in Kingston. A group of us fellas hang out there a lot, and he's been producing what you call in Jamaica juggling rhythms, you know? Yeah. Um, where he would put six, seven, eight artists on a rhythm, you know, mix it, put it out. And get another project done which was that's how jamaican music really in the dance hall has really been rolled out for years you know you have like people have like slang ting rhythm slang or ting, punani rhythm and all of them. diwali rhythm you know <laughs> these are some of the very popular yeah. and you have the host of the whole dance hall like like i think everybody's on diwali rhythm anybody yeah. that's anybody in dance hall yeah. from buja to beanie to braga to all of them and back in the day it was slang ting right and then it, it, it just darker like shade darker punani shade. um <laughs> Oh, the holy uh, pepper them. seed. Pepper seed. Oh, you can start. You can even stop. Real rock. <laughs> Real rock. Oh my God. Lots of different. So Sean is continuing the Jamaican, very proudly continuing the Jamaican tradition of producing rhythms. Yeah. So um, this most recent one, because I did one before, um, it didn't get as much airplay as this one is getting, because you know you grow in strength and strength. Yeah. yeah. I promise Sean Paul is going to pay attention to it. Exactly. So he really rolled out some A-listers for this one because yeah. you have busy signal. Chi ching ching. Beanie is on it. Beanie man. Uh, Sean, of course. Sean Paul you is on it. it. Um, um, yeah. Deli Ranks. Deli Ranks. Well, you know the uh, thing, man. Make, you know listen, the do my research, research. You know, ladies and gentlemen. And I actually <laughs> love the rhythm. Nice. Like rhythm both. Nice. Nice. The only problem I have with it, I'm going to talk to Sean Paul about it. Mr. What do you woman them there? You know, something Where is funny. Females? His last rhythm had, had, had females on it because I know Aishana uh, had voice for him. Um, this other girl. Not Sen new art. Uh, Shensia has voiced. Shensia has voiced on his new one that's not out yet. That's what he, he has said. He a new one that's he, being done now. He, yeah, because he said he, he um, offered this one to Shensia and she went for another one. She went for another one, yeah. He said, We still need some females on this. So, I didn't. The, the, the females, he didn't have females on this one. No, no, no. I went through the he whole He had two of on the last rhythm before. Uh, he had put two rhythms out before. He had females on them both. Yeah. This no caption one doesn't have females on it. No. Nope. Fambo. I was trying to remember. Fambo has a great oh, song on it too. Okay. I didn't come to the party to listen to nobody oh, problem. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's my favorite. Oh, you can answer, you can <laughs> yeah. So when I heard the rhythm and I was writing to it, you know. Yeah. Me and a virgin of mine, I have a big him up to you know. Um why I'm name skipping me right now. Virgin down in Jamaica, I was like, yo, yeah. champ on new rhythm you know, for right to this, you know. Sadiki, big up Sadiki. Right. Sadiki gave me the idea for the first line. Yeah. All night long, Zoom Zoom I get beaten. I'm like, what? 
We'll be playing the clean God version. We'll be That's playing the clean the version. Clean version. And everybody has sing the dirty version a while ago. Yeah. You can check it out. We have community radio, we can't do that. So yes. Your if you want the other yeah, version, you can go online. Yeah, my favorite girl. Thank you. You're my yeah, my yeah, my favorite girl. Nice. It's all night long. So she can sing. You hear her the harmony a while ago? You're bad. I told you I love the song. You're bad. It's, it's beautiful. It's a nice little vibe, the kind Thank of you. thing. I know, man. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, man. So that's out now. It's being promoted now. Mm -hmm. um, we've done clips for it, but we're actually shooting the video for it in a week and a half time in Jamaica. In Jamaica. When we get back, yeah, man. Okay. Um, Kiran Khan. Yes. Big up Kiran for all the visuals coming through he just did that new bougie song we you know trust fool me know, oh, me know. yeah man that's I my boy that. yeah oh, big up to geez. kieran that did that video he's doing good stuff right now he's with cardi b doing super bowl actually tonight like. so big yes. up yeah man yeah yes. that's um, where i am so wow you know say so you have things to do and i appreciate it no, but I, here. I ask everybody yes who is or was or continues to be your inspiration not necessarily musical inspiration but just in life for people to have an idea what helped you get to where you are now wow oh, a lot of inspirations you know it, and it's not only from human beings doesn't matter it doesn't matter <laughs> you know who or um, what is your inspiration I, oh boy you know it's a hard question i have many inspirations uh, my mother is a very inspiring person um, See, wasn't that hard? Because the first um, person is your mom. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. Um, I've been seeing more of my mom for the last couple of years than I have for maybe 20 years. Why? Well, I lost my dad about five years ago. Oh, and sorry. my mom was with my dad for 50 years. So now she is alone. Yeah. And, you know, I see her go through. I see her go through the changes. When you attach to somebody 50 years, it kind of it leaves you a little bit listless and it leaves you a bit lost when they lose them. But I see life. her make a full come around, you know? She had a couple of months there where she wasn't too well, but she's made a full come around. And, and to be smiling and up and happy and positive looking for the future yeah. is very inspirational in itself, you know? So my mom is definitely one. Sean Paul is also a very inspirational guy because if there's one thing him teach me after rocking with him for many years is Humility. humility if you know sean oh yeah sean's a big pop star but he still he still walks to the bar and order his own drink and pay for it yeah. out of his pocket but instead of sending a bunch of groupies for exactly. it you know he's still very very humble when, and there's a lot to learn from that when we were at the studio well i was i was with a girl group and we're at emerge High yeah, yeah. and we're at the studio we we up near mona and he was yes. recording peter blake studio and <laughs> yeah <laughs> And he came in and we, we, you know, we were debating whether we should talk to him or so. And he, he, he was just coming out and he was talking to somebody and he come out. And he say, hey, you girls uh, emerge. And he say, yeah. And he sit down, look at me and he say, so how are you girls doing? You girls all right? So I'm looking after you. And, it, and this guy, we just expected him to just walk and we were going to say, hey, Sean, hi. And, and it was the, it, it, it probably didn't mean anything to him. But it felt so good to us to, to, to know that, you know. We could have stopped on all our reasoning with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just to say hi to say, we weren't asking him for anything, we weren't, you know, obsessing over it. We just wanted to say hi and just yeah, tell man. him congrats on his success and everything. And he's still very he's still very much yeah. the same way. And even meeting him at the show and everything, it just he was just so easy. Yeah, man. There was no nerves or anything. It just seemed like it's somebody you know for a long time. Yeah man, he's an inspiration for sure. Yeah. But you all know? you guys though. I mean, I didn't sense any kind of, um, there was no bossy kind of negativity or no kind of, who this? Or who you people? Or nothing like that. Nothing. The, the, the vibe was just, there was love and there was support and there was nice. appreciation. And he actually said, thanks for coming to the show. <laughs> Are you kidding? Yes. <laughs> Thank yes. you for the show. <laughs> you can get inspiration out of many things, man, because yeah. if an... <clears throat> You know, you watch the news and you read books and you see world figures like uh, Gandhi and, um, you know, people that really stood for something. Marcus Garvey is a big hero of mine. Yeah. Big, big hero of mine. Um, so I, grow, I draw inspiration from a lot of things. From even the big Aki tree I have in my backyard at my house. Oh, rub it I in. I draw it. Rub it in. Why? Because you can't get no Ethiopia right now. And it's Ethiopia season now. Wait, oh, Apple yeah, season oh, now. So I'm going to go in a week time. Tree of a full. Oh, and yeah. every year at this wow. time. You just go on, don't the you? Tree, yeah, man. Never talk about the tree. 
I'm talking about the tree because it does flow up. It's it sent up the place nice. Oh, it does. Yeah, the blossoms and they are. I don't know. I, I got the inspiration from nature a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you're artistic. Yeah, man. I, so, I really do. Yeah. I appreciate it. I appreciate it for real. Absolutely. And I appreciate you. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. And seeing me. Thank and interviewing you. me. I appreciate no, it. Thank you. Because you've just come off the show. I don't think you've had a couple I mean, like you have two or three hours of sleep yet. No, no, not really. And um, We're and used to it. I well I appreciate it. That's I I, I And when you come to Jamaica that. you have to keep the link to you know. Yeah, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Hope you don't stay away too long. No, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, this has been wonderful. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for having me. Keep it locked right here. Absolutely. And remember My lustrous friend. Barren easy all night long. Look out for it when we get Check up. Me out on Instagram. Yep. At Farren Easy, F A R E N I Z Z I. Yes, or as we say in Australia, I Z Z I. Oh, it's British, eh? It's British. F A R E N I Z Z I. Yeah. That's how you get it, right? Okay. Right. Well, although it's because Australia, <laughs> the Australian people are talking about this. Oh, them talk. Yeah, hello. Down, mate. Yeah, fair and easy. I know they say hello, like, hello. Hello, you. Hello, they put an I E G H on the hello. I know. Hello, hello. And they say Nari. <laughs> no. I don't know. Nari. I don't know. Nari. <laughs> we're not teasing you, we just love it. Yeah, we're teasing you, <laughs> we still love it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, bless. Thank you so much. God bless everybody. Thank you. And we will talk to you again soon.